Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. I call this non-standard because we have the natural log on one side and a linear function on the other side. So we have ln x equals x minus 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. I don't think I've done this problem before, but that also looks a little bit familiar. I apologize if I made a video before. It's been a while if I did. So guess and check may definitely give you a solution, but not necessarily all the solutions. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of work. First of all, I want to do e to the power both sides to get rid of the ln. So let's go ahead and write it as e to the power ln x equals e to the power x minus 1. We can safely say that because ln x is the same as x minus 1, so this is true. And then e to the power ln x, hopefully x is positive, right, is equivalent to x, and we get x equals e to the power x minus 1. This could also be a different problem, but it's the same problem. So let's go ahead and write e to the power x minus 1 as e to the power x divided by e. And now we have this equation, x equals this. So my goal is to bring it into a form like t e to the t, so I could use Lambert's w function. We'll talk briefly about that when we get there. But if by cross multiplication, I get e to the x equals e x. We probably did this problem a while ago. I vaguely remember. Anyways, so where do we go from here? Since we want to bring it into this form, t to the t, and t is, by the way, a function of x. It could be anything that contains x. I have an x on the right-hand side, and I have an e to the x. So you don't want to move the x, because once you do, you're going to get x to the power of negative 1 or 1 over x, which is not good for our purposes. So let's leave it there and move e to the x, because the exponents can easily be uh, manipulated. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and bring this over here by division and put the e on the other side. So it's going to look like this. If you want, I can do this in two steps, and I could probably do it here. But anyways, uh, first of all, I'm going to divide both sides by e to the x. So it's going to be e to the x divided by e to the x equals e x divided by e to the x. And then this is going to be 1. And then, of course, I want to stick... By the way, so I should be writing it as, okay, what am I doing? E x divided by e to the x. And what I want to do here is basically just stick to this and put this e on the other side. So this is equal to 1. And if you divide both sides by e, you're going to get x over e to the x equals 1 over e. And then, now, since I have e to the x in the denominator, I can go ahead and write it to the negative exponent. So write it like x times e to the power negative x equals 1 over e. And 1 over e, of course, can be written as e to the power negative 1. So we're kind of closer to this form, not quite there, but we're pretty close. So what we need to do next is do a little bit of manipulation again. So since you want t e to the t, you want these two things to be the same. I have negative x in the exponent, so I do need a negative x, and that can be easily done. Just multiply both sides by negative 1, and you'll get it. Multiply by negative 1, multiply by negative 1, and you got it. So now this is what we have, and obviously this can be written as, in a nicer form as negative 1 times e to the power of negative 1. Now by comparing these two equations, obviously, you're going to get the answer right away, right? But let's go ahead and use Lambert's W function, so let's talk about that briefly. What is Lambert's W function? So Lambert's W function is actually the inverse of Another function that you should be familiar with, which is x e to the x. So Lambert's W function takes x to e to the x and just returns x. Okay? So that is the function whose output is x when the input is x e to the x. Make sense? So in other words, if you invert both sides, you're going to get this function, which is x e to the x. And again, if you invert it again, you're going to get Lambert's W function. Okay? Now, if we apply this to any expression like let's say w t e to the t then it's going to be t of course this doesn't guarantee there's going to be a single answer in some cases we have more than one possibility that's why it's not a function if it's defined from negative infinity to infinity so you kind of have to split it up you have to look at the graph of x e to the x there's a 
I think, a maxima, and then you have to cut it through that point, so on and so forth. Anyways, it's a long story, but to keep it short, this is what we're going to be using. So if you apply Lambert's W function here on both of these expressions, let's go ahead and move this a little bit to give us some space. I'm going to go ahead and Lambert both sides, and then we're just going to apply the definition, right? The definition says, okay, if you have W e to the T, then it's just going to be t, all right? So we're applying it to the negative x, e to the negative x. So this is my t. So that's going to give me negative x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, this is going to be my whatever. And the answer is going to be negative 1. But if negative x is negative 1, that means x is equal to 1. Make sense? Okay, so is that the only answer? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from a graphical little bit of calculus perspective. Okay, so... Let's take a look at the function, log, the natural log function first. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this, but let's explore a little bit. If f of x is defined as ln x, then we can take the first derivative, and that would become 1 over x. Now, this kind of tells you that this is not going to be 0, therefore no max or min, right? There's no extrema on this function. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second derivative too because it's also interesting. It can be sometimes interesting. And remember, the second derivative gives you concavity, right? So if the second derivative is positive on a certain interval, our graph is going to be concave down. By the way, concave down doesn't necessarily mean the graph is increasing. It could be decreasing as well. But it just means that it's opening up. Like a parabola, y equals x squared is a good example, right? It's concave up because if you take the second derivative, you're going to get a positive number. So it's always concave up. And this function is also always concave up because negative 1 over x squared is always less than 0. It can't be 0. It's always negative. Therefore, f is concave down. It's down because it's the second derivative is negative. Make sense? Great. So another thing that you can look at is how does this interact with x minus 1? Well, x minus 1, let's call that g of x. It's just a linear function. So it has a slope of 1. Uh, and if you graph it, and I'll show you a graph in a little bit, but it's going to have an x in a step of 1 and y in a step of negative 1. So it's going to look like this, right? I mean, not dotted line, but just wanted to show you. So our ln function, uh-oh, if you set f of x equal to 0, you're also going to get x equals 1. Hmm, interesting. g of 1 and f of 1 are equal because they're both equal to 0, which means there seems to be an intersection point. Of course, we already found it, right? But is that the only intersection point? That's a good question. So if our line goes like this and our ln function goes like something like this, I'm just making it up, obviously you're going to see two intersection points. But remember, we just saw that our function is concave down. But does that mean there's going to be only one solution because we could have something like this, right? Think about it. Like we could have a graph like this. It all depends on how it behaves, right? But here's the thing. Something interesting happens here. Not only that they intersect, but they intersect in a special way because if you look at the first derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, you can realize at 1, this is 1. So that means the tangent drawn to ln x at x equals 1 has a slope of 1, but at the same time, that this line that intersects the graph has the same slope. So those two lines are parallel, but they go through the same point. Therefore, they have to, what is that word? Um, overlap. Okay, there you go. So x equals 1 is going to be a tangent or point of tangency. In other words, so here's what the graph looks like. I think that's uh, going to say it better. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.